Hello everyone, it's Emma and welcome back to my channel. Today is a bit of a spontaneous video. Just a quick backstory. I've been planning out my content for this move. We're leaving in like 50-ish days and then we're not gonna have the desktop for a few weeks. So I need to get all this content planned out. I've been planning all this content ahead. So what I mean to say is because I'm filming out all of this content, I had no intention of making this video. This is a completely spontaneous video based off a of TikTok I saw. I made a TikTok responding to it. I went off on my Instagram stories about it and I'm like, I need more than one minute to talk about this. So here we are. Anyway, as you can probably tell by the title, today we're going to be talking about nuclear waste, not nuclear energy. I'm gonna save that for another day. Today is specifically nuclear waste because I learned about something that could be potentially very catastrophic that no one probably knows about. Before we get too far into it, if I talk a little bit too fast for you, you can change the speed of the video using the gear icon right down here, or you can read along with the blog post version linked below. First, let's talk about the environmental impact of nuclear waste. I'm sure we have all, you know, heard of at least one nuclear accident in the world where everyone has to be evacuated, plants are contaminated, the farmland is contaminated, the water is contaminated, the air, everything gets contaminated from nuclear waste, whether it's an accident or even purposeful disposal. So nuclear waste can of course be the byproduct of nuclear energy, but nuclear waste can also be everything that comes with extracting these materials from the ground, the plutonium and the other stuff. But nuclear waste can also be stuff like the soil at nuclear test sites and then the gloves and other PPE, personal protective equipment that people wear to handle nuclear waste, energy and other sorts of components. And something to note, obviously we all know how bad of an environmental impact nuclear waste, the potential to reach if handled improperly, but something to note is we're running out of space to store it. Many facilities also see contaminated groundwater, surface water, and soil as well, even if stored properly. In order to restore the environment in these areas, the Department of Energy estimates a cost of $265 billion over the next 75 years in the US alone. So this is not just an issue that we're seeing today, but it is an issue our children are going to see, our grandchildren are going to see, and people are literally going to be facing the consequences of these actions for thousands of years. And even though we are running out of space and this is becoming very harmful to ourselves and the planet, why are we still producing nuclear energy? That's because nuclear energy is technically considered a clean energy source. And that's because it burns a lot less CO2 than traditional sources like fossil fuels. Again, we're going to be jumping into that in a future video, not so much today. And according to this article from 2011, a little outdated but still pretty recent, it's been a pretty common practice for countries who use nuclear energy to dump that nuclear waste onto remote islands in the Pacific, literally into the ocean. These islands are not very big, and even if they are, all of these islands are susceptible to rising ocean levels, meaning all of this waste is going to end up in the oceans if it hasn't already. And that leads us to the Marshall Islands. We'll get there, I promise. First, let's talk about Fukushima. If you're not new to the channel, you know that I live in Japan. If you're new to the channel, hi, I'm Emma, I live in Japan. So I've gotten so many questions over the last month or so since Japan has been, for me to talk about my perspective on Fukushima. Initially, I'm like, this is terrible, period, that's it. But I did a little research, I did a lot of research for this video, and what I learned was quite interesting. So let's talk about Fukushima, shall we? If you're unfamiliar, Fukushima is a city, a coastal city in Japan, pretty much all Japan's cities are coastal. It is north east of Tokyo. And 10 years ago, almost to the day, Fukushima, well, Japan experienced a very big earthquake, 0.9 magnitude, which led to a tsunami. This tsunami led to the meltdown of three nuclear reactors in Fukushima on the coast, right into the ocean. So obviously this melted down into the ocean, but then it also affected all of the groundwater, soil, as stuff does during a nuclear meltdown. All the people were evacuated. There are still zones where people are advised not to go to. And so Japan immediately went to action, started cleaning up the nuclear waste. But all this time, Japan is like, well, what do we do now? What do we do with this nuclear waste? Because if you're unfamiliar with Japan as well, it's a very small country. You know, in the US, we could just go out in the middle of the desert, dig a big hole, cover it up. But Japan doesn't have that option. I talked about this in a video about incinerating waste because Japan does that too, because they don't have landfill space. Anyway, up until now, all of this nuclear contaminated water has been stored in holding tanks in Fukushima, but they've gotten a little too full. They need to do something with it. And so I guess they decided just to dump it into the ocean, but they thought about it a little bit, aren't just dumping it directly into the ocean as it is, they are diluting it very heavily with seawater. So they're pumping seawater into these holding tanks, I, I think, this is what I interpreted, into these holding tanks, diluting this nuclear waste a lot. Like they're diluting it a lot and then pumping it back into the ocean. It still doesn't sound good, 
but it is much better, I think, than people originally thought. Yes, it's not a perfect option, but many world leaders, not just in Japan, are coming across issues like this. What do we do with our nuclear waste? We're literally running out of room. But is this the right solution? Maybe? There's really no right solution when it comes to nuclear waste. All of it's bad. But I guess this is better than just taking it to some random remote island and dumping it there. I don't know. I personally think that any nuclear waste in the oceans is bad because if the oceans die, we die. So we'll see what they come up with in the next few years. Let's move on to Chernobyl. Now I'm only going to be touching on Chernobyl just briefly, just because everyone thinks it's like the worst nuclear contaminated zone in the world. And I'm gonna prove you wrong. I'm sure everyone has heard of it, but if not, in April of 1986, there was an accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in the current USSR, but now Ukraine. Like with any nuclear fallout situation, the citizens were evacuated and it had a very big impact on agriculture in the region. And still to this day, countries like Ukraine, Russia, and Belarus are still affected. Everything from the milk and cows, wood, plants, soil, all was found to be contaminated in this region. So why do I even bring up Chernobyl? Everyone just assumes this is the worst nuclear fallout the world has ever seen. But what if I told you there was somewhere on Earth more radioactive than Chernobyl? That would be the Marshall Islands. If you're like me, you've probably never heard of the Marshall Islands. Dan knew about them, of course. He he knows a lot. I was I came to him shocked about this information. He's like, I know. I hope at least some of you out there are gonna be as shocked as me because when I tell you my jaw dropped, my jaw dropped. I, I literally couldn't do anything last night besides talk about this on Instagram, TikTok, and make this script. I'm so heated. Let's get into it. So the Marshall Islands are their own independent nation and a small atoll of islands with their claimed territory being mostly water. This atoll is located 5,000 miles west of California in the Pacific Ocean. So in 1945, the world's first nuclear bomb was dropped. Well, the first two on Hiroshima and Nagasaki and plenty of people know about them. I just want to quick, quick sidebar. Um, I went to Hiroshima in November again in April, mid March recently. And then I went to Nagasaki also recently and wow, I have no words other than my eyes and my heart were just completely opened. I feel like in US history, we're just taught, we dropped some bombs, war was over the end. A little more detail, of course, but going and seeing photos of the destruction, actual artifacts from these events, so, so eye-opening. Okay, sidebar over. And like I said, many people know of Chernobyl and Fukushima, but why does nobody know about the Marshall Islands? I think this is just as important. In the 40s was when the US decided to start developing the hydrogen bomb, which is more powerful than the nuclear bomb. And they conducted multiple tests in the Marshall Islands. This led to the natives having to be removed from their homes, being exposed, as well as Japanese fishermen to very high levels of radiation. The levels of radiation they were seen to be exposed to are that equal to those who were at ground zero at Nagasaki and Hiroshima. So in 1946 is when the US really started ramping up these tests and they approached Bikini Atoll, the 167 residents who lived there. They were asked to leave because they were told that the US would be, the US would be perfecting a bomb in order to prevent all future wars. I have no words. So the residents were told that they would be able to return one day and for the time being, they were relocated to a small uninhabited island with minimal resources about 125 miles away. They were then resettled in Bikini Atoll in 1969, so only about 20 years later. And then another nine years later in 1970, they were asked to re they were asked to evacuate again due to high levels of radiation. So this is really this really shows the true environmental and human impacts of nuclear waste is that it's not just in the air in the water for a few minutes for a few years. It's there for decades, sometimes hundreds of years. But that's not all. This literally is not the worst part. So in 1979 when they discovered all this radioactive soil plants still there there was a plan to cover it up. So in one of the bomb craters, the US took a bunch of the radioactive soil from the Marshall Islands, as well as radioactive waste, literally from Nevada, they they brought it in to put it into this giant hole, cover it with like 18 inches of cement. And this thing is like 400 feet across. It's huge. It's not really dome shaped, but they call it the dome, the run it dome, the ruin it dome. I don't quite know how to pronounce it, but the locals call it the tomb. <laughs> Very pleasant. It's because they know how truly deadly this thing is. And here's the real kicker. I keep telling you it's getting worse. The tomb is leaking. So I just learned about this yesterday, Wednesday, the Wednesday before you're seeing this. People have known about this for years and you wanna know why it's leaking. So <laughs> this all ties into what my channel is about. I promise I'm not just talking about nuclear waste for no reason. It's leaking and it's cracking because of climate change. 
it's all intertwined. Of course, all of this nuclear waste is bad for the environment, but it's going to keep getting worse. It's going, this dome is going to crack and spill into the ocean if we don't stop the rising ocean levels. And I know that's a really big task, but like as the more the ocean keeps rising, the more the tides are gonna keep hitting the cement and breaking it apart, the more storms that are gonna happen because yes, more storms are equal to climate change getting worse. I'll leave that video linked above. The more earthquakes that are gonna happen, this dome is gonna fall apart. It still gets worse. I can't, uh, I'm getting mad all over again. So of course the natives on these islands are subject to rising ocean levels and they're gonna literally lose their homes, but now they also have to risk that radioactive waste coming back to haunt them. It already had haunted their ancestors, not even their ancestors, their parents and grandparents. And now these new natives to the Marshall Islands are gonna have to face the consequences of this nuclear waste leaking out of this dome that someone else put there for them to deal with. Officials have even said that because the area is so radioactive, like still, so yes, they contain most of it but the area around it is still affected they say it's going to be really hard to pinpoint the leak exactly and scientists predict that the marshall islands could be uninhabitable due to rising ocean levels by the 2030s that's literally nine years away so that means these people are going to be losing their homes within nine years and this dome could be cracking within nine years and that's another video i want to touch on in the future is rising ocean levels and how it affects coastal communities the most and how they're probably not even contributing to climate change nearly as much as we are so thankfully it sounds really bad it really does but thankfully the leaking is rather minor and that is because only about 0.1 percent of the plutonium released during these weapons testings has been leaking but how long will that small amount remain what happens when the crack gets worse what happens when this dome just splits in half because of a big earthquake or something usually i like to end my videos with action steps what can we do in this case i don't know i mean obviously tackling climate change itself is very hard for us to do on an individual level and our actions do matter but what do we do about this gigantic dome in the middle of the pacific ocean that's leaking nuclear waste into the ocean. I don't know, I, I don't know what to do. And that's what's I think extra frustrating is all of this stuff that happened that our grandparents' generation left here for us, we have to now deal with. And that's a big part of why I do what I do is because I wanna educate our generation to not make these same mistakes. I don't wanna leave behind stuff like this for our grandchildren for generations years to come. We obviously know that nuclear waste is terrible for our health and the environment. All we have to do to, for this is to look at survivors from the bombings of Hiroshima, Nagasaki, the Marshall Islands, and people who were at the fallout locations of Fukushima and Chernobyl. I think we need to look at these survivors, listen to their firsthand encounters, bring about positive change. And this is just one of those situations too that officials say, it's not a problem. It's not my problem, which is so frustrating. So I think, I don't know, can we pressure our politicians and our, our officials, our leaders into fixing this problem? I don't know. Can we, should we start a petition or something? If anyone has any good ideas, definitely leave them down below because I'm out of ideas. I have none. The reason I wanted to talk about this is to spread awareness. Because I didn't know, surely at least one person watching this doesn't know either. Also, I got a lot of votes on Instagram telling me to spill the tea on this video. <laughs> I'm sure we could seal up that crack, but it really is just a band-aid. I don't know what to offer other than just band-aids, <laughs> but I really just wanted to give a voice to this message because the people of the Marshall Islands are suffering not only because of climate change, but because of man-made actions, which cause climate change, I guess, and because of the man-made actions that are creating climate change, they're just exposing more man-made actions that are affecting these people. And this is really where intersectional environmentalism comes into play, because we can, you know, we can fight for climate justice all day long, but if we don't listen to the people of the Marshall Islands who are facing this firsthand, we're not gonna know how to help them. If we don't listen to the people who have been affected by nuclear waste, we're not gonna know how to fix the problem of nuclear waste. And don't get me wrong, I don't wanna downplay what's going on with Fukushima at all. I still think that's a very important issue that we need to be talking about, but we do need to look at the rest of the world as well. And I wanna, I wanna be able to find more stuff like this and uncover it and bring it to the public's attention because this has been going on for years. Fukushima, the dumping has been relatively new, like within the last month or so, but this leaking dome has been going on for at least five years from what I could find possibly more. So thankfully Japan is at least diluting the nuclear waste before they put it into the ocean, but this this dome on the Marshall Islands is not being diluted. It's being leaked directly into the ocean and honestly is basically a ticking time bomb waiting for a big typhoon, a big earthquake or something else to come through and split it in half. 
and I think that's something really hard too, is to gauge just what environmental impact we would see if this dome did crack completely. It's scary to think about, but it honestly could lead vast ocean decay. And as we already know, the ocean is, is not doing so well as it is. It is really not how I normally end my videos, but I don't know what advice to offer you. Honestly, I'm just trying to be honest here and I'm really just trying to spread the word. So you're being really loud. Hey, sit down, sit, sit. Sit. Shh. Can I have a kiss, please? I said no. Kiss no? Okay. No? I know this is not my usual content. This is like a pretty heavy topic to talk about, but this is kind of where I want my channel to go moving forward. I still largely want to focus on free, easy, and fun ways to live low waste. If you're new here, that's what I normally talk about because I want, I want people to see zero waste as something that's easy, practical, and achievable. But part of that is educating ourselves on issues like this. So that's like kind of where I want to take my channel is more on the education and talking about these hard issues that need to be talked about and stuff that we all need to know about. I love you. Oh, you're so good. So that's really all I have for this video. If you watched all the way to the end, I really appreciate your time. I hope that you learned something today. And if you did, you found this video valuable, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. Let me know what you learned down below. Let me know if I forgot anything. And let me know if you have any action steps that we can take moving forward. Maybe with this community, we can start some sort of petition or something to get action on this because yeah, it would be hard to fix, but it's worth it to fix it for the time being until we figure something else out. I don't know. It's so hard. Cause like, yeah, even if we do, fix this crack then what do we just keep do we just keep producing nuclear energy and like what happens if the world denuclearizes their militaries what do we do with all that this is my personal opinion this uh, this is not anyone else's opinion this is not based on fact this is just my thoughts i think <laughs> nuclear energy weapons whatever it is i don't know the science one of the worst ideas ever nuclear weapons absolutely devastating and honestly you it's, it's so hard to imagine unless you've been to a site that's been exposed to that sort of stuff which is i guess only like five major places in the world nuclear fallout is such a big risk of nuclear energy even with nuclear energy there still comes nuclear waste and then what do we do with it we're running out of places to store it the world has all these nuclear weapons that have the power to like decimate the planet i don't know i think it's all terrible weapons and energy we're destroying the planet in the process and it's just sad it's so sad what it's doing to the people and the planet and that's where i'm gonna end this thank you for watching I appreciate your time. Again, let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know if you like this video, if you'd like to see more like this, or if I should just stick to my usual stuff. No, I'm not going to. This stuff's important. I'm gonna talk about it. I'm gonna wrap this up. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, remember that your small changes really do have a big impact in the long run, but sometimes we need bigger changes. <laughs> Bye. Good intro. <laughs> before we get too far into it, before we get too far into it, before, I even scripted this one. <laughs> Oh no. I just realized I restarted my desktop before I put all my sources into the document. And what was it? What was it? <laughs> we're asked to leave. They were asked to leave. They were asked to leave Monday. <laughs> I used voice to text to write this script and I wanted it to say the residents were told they could return one day, but Google heard Monday. <laughs> nuclear energy, nuclear, nu nuclear. Developing nuclear stuff.